When you look in the Sefer Torah, you're looking deep into the secret of creation. The reason is that the deepest concept we have of Torah is that it's a map of reality. But unlike a map that is drawn after the territory, this one was drawn before. So the Torah is like a genetic program that expresses itself in the world. You know, if you look into the genes, you're seeing a map of reality, but it's a map that causes reality. So, you know, when you see, um, I'll give you two examples. You look into a genetic program, if you know your genes, you'll know what the body will look like. Now, the genes for blue eyes don't look blue. You have to know how to read genes. But if you know genetics, you look at these genes, you know the eyes will be blue. If you look at blue eyes, you know what these genes look like too. If you look in a Sefer Torah, you're looking at a genetic program of reality. If you know your genes, from that you'll know the world. If you look at the world, you'll know the Torah. Abraham, Avram Avinu, he walked the earth before the Torah was given. He figured out the Torah, reverse engineered what Torah must be. Because he saw what the body looks like, he figured out what the genes must be. King Solomon, he lived after the Torah was given. So he looked into the Torah, figured out the world. The Major says that he sent creatures to the bottom of the ocean to fetch him things that he needed. He knew where they lay because he knew Torah. Right? He planted crops in Jerusalem that don't grow there. Because he knew from his Torah wisdom that Jerusalem's the center of reality, meridia of energy run out from there to the whole world. On those lines of energy, he planted the crops that grow in those places they grew in Yerushalayim. So you're looking in a Sefer Torah, you're looking, you know, to take a more mundane analogy, if you go and see a movie, right? Imagine there was a movie kosher enough to go and see. It hasn't been for many years. But in the days when movies were like that, they were shone through a film. A light is projected through a film that projects itself on a screen. What appears on the screen must have been on the film. So when you observe reality, you're seeing a reflection of something that's on a film. By the way, that's also not true. That's also a picture of another time and place. So the level you're looking at on the screen is the most distant that it could be from reality. But it's good enough. When you recognize those places, you study them well, you'll recognize those people when you meet them in the, in the flesh. The Torah is that film. So a light is refracted or projected through that film and it projects itself on a screen. What's in the Torah is in the world. What's in the world is in the Torah. And it works on a specific level as well. Right? Here's an idea about the Hebrew language. The Hebrew language is a language of essence. That's why we call it Lashon Kodesh, the holy language. Of course, the Rambam says it's a holy language because it's clean. It cannot be vulgar in Hebrew. If you try to curse and swear in Hebrew, it comes out as beautiful euphemisms. You know, you can't be vulgar. In modern Hebrew, if you want to be really vulgar, you have to speak another language. You have to borrow words. There are no vulgarities in Hebrew because it's a holy language. But the Kabbalists explain that it's a holy language because it says what it means. In Hebrew, the word for a word is davar. That's the same as the word for a thing. There's no other language like that. In every other language, there's a word for a word, an utterance, and then there's a word for a thing. In Hebrew, they're the same thing. Because the word is the thing. The deepest concept of creation is that God's word was spoken and the davar word crystallized, condensed, concretized into the davar object. So every word becomes an object. Every word should be speaking. Every object should be speaking to you, of course. You see a thing in the world, the davar, it should resonate with a meaning. Today we live in a hidden world, very difficult to hear, you need a lot of perception. But in the original format of Hebrew, the language is a holy language because the words actually, you understand Hebrew letters, they code for the essence like genetic material and like chemical elements. You know what those letters are? You reconstruct them, you put them together, you get a compound. And if you know the elements, you'll know the compound nature as surely as if you know chemistry. Take, for example, you look in a Sefer Torah, right? So Torah always unfolds organically. That means you start with a compressed essence and that unfolds into a program. Step one contains everything, moment of conception. From there it unfolds and unpacks to step two. Always loyal to step one. Step two contains the essence of what comes in step three. Always loyal to step two. But it's unfolded and unpacked more. And the Torah unfolds that way, right? I'll give you two examples. Torah has two beginnings. It begins with the word Boratius in the beginning. It begins with the Anoichi, I am, spiritually. It runs chronologically from Be Brashes through history, and it runs spiritually from I am down into the spiritual revelation. And here's the axiom. The first word contains everything. Moment of conception. The parent's genes fuse at that moment the future is determined. Whether the child has blue eyes, the shape of his nose, you don't see it yet. Very compressed, but it will unfold and reveal itself as time goes by. 
The word Breshis, for example, first word of the Torah, has six letters. There's 720 permutations of six letters. And each permutation is a different expression of Breshis. It must be, it's the first word. So take the six letters. Breshis spells Bara, Shes, he created six. Yirei, Shabbos, moving towards the end point, which is Shabbat. Yashar, Aleph, Beis, Taf, to go straight from Aleph, Bet, to the Taf. Yashar, Avot, the straightness of the forefathers, which is what the book of Genesis is all about. Aleph, Betishrei, the first day of the year. Every which way you rearrange those six letters, you're talking about another expression of compressed essence of beginning, the first word. The Gaon of Vilna used to say that all mitzvahs in the Torah are contained in the first word. It must be, it's the first word. Once the students were sitting with their teacher, the Gaon of Vilna, at a pigeon aben, redemption of the firstborn child, son after 30 days. They said, Rebbe, you told us that all mitzvahs are contained in the first word. Where's pigeon aben contained in the first word? He said, what's the problem? Ben, Risho, Achar, Shloshim, Yom, Tifte. Acronym, you shall redeem the firstborn child after 30 days. That's the first word. And they could have asked him any mitzvah, he would have shown them. If it's the moment of conception, it contains everything. So the first word contains the whole Torah, and from there it unfolds. Take another example. The Gemara says that the whole Torah is contained in the Ten Commandments. By the way, why are there Ten Commandments? Why Ten Commandments? Ask any educated Westerner, they will tell you, Jew or non-Jew, Ten Commandments, those are the big moral principles. That's morality. Morality stands on those Ten Principles, but that's not right. It's not right. Not coveting. It's not a major moral principle. I could show you much more serious prohibitions. The Ten Commandments are not the major moral principles. They're the, pack, they're the ten categories. The Torah is packed in ten categories. When Moses came down the mountain, Moshe Rabbeinu came down the mountain, he was carrying ten commandments. <coughs> Why ten? He was supposed to bring the whole Torah. People think, well, they, they were heavy. You know, they were heavy. He brought, uh, he brought the whole Torah. He brought the ten root categories from which the Torah unpacks. Of Sajagon, one of the great early authorities, 9th century, 10th century, in his Siddur, he shows you where every mitzvah, every commandment of the Torah comes out of one of the Ten Commandments. Very beautiful, poetic. He takes each of the ten and shows you 60, 70, 80, 90 mitzvahs that unfold from that one. They're not more important than the others, but they're the root categories. So the Gemara says the whole Torah is contained in the Ten Commandments. The ten are contained in the first one. The first one's contained in the word Anoichi I am, and the first word, the first word is contained in the Aleph. Is this some sort of a game? No. The Torah is unpacked from a more compressed essence. And that, what's an aleph? See the Hebrew language, an aleph? An aleph is two yuds and a vav. It's the first letter, it's silent, it's the beginning of the alphabet, but it's a compressed essence of all the rest. It's a composite letter. Two yuds and a vav. Yud, the ten emanations, spiritual, mystical emanations coming down from the higher world, reflected inversely as they are in this world, joined by the letter vav, which means the letter of connection. Vav in Hebrew means and. Vav in Hebrew means a hook. Two tens and a vav, 26, the divine name, the point of origin. Actually, the Sefi Yetzirah says it's actually 32, because it's two yuds and two vavs, because it's vav. 32 is the root number of creation. 32 is Lamad base, the heart, the inner aspect of creation. <clears throat> God's name appears 32 times in the story of creation. 32 teeth, why do we have 32 teeth? The teeth are the junction between the inner essence and the outer revelation. An injury external to the teeth is not life-threatening. You don't break Shabbat for that. An injury internal to the teeth, dangerous, life-threatening. 32. 32 in Hebrew is the word kavod. Honor, dignity, glory. The world was created, akol bara lechavoido, to show Hashem's glory. Kavod, 32. 10 and 22. Kavod. Chavbet vav dalet. 10 sfirot, the 10 mystical emanations, joined by the 22 lines. Each of those lines is a different letter. Every Hebrew, Hebrew letter is a different line of energy joining mystical emanations. You know what energy it connects, you know what the letter means. So 32 is the number of the, the root, first 32 days of counting the Omer, is where the inner essence is built, the 33rd day you can light the fire. The Talmudim, the students of Rabbi Akiva, they died on the first 32 days of the Omer because they didn't give enough, kavod, <clears throat> to each other, right? So those 32 are the root of essence. So the, the Aleph says it all. It's 26, it's 32. It's silent because it hasn't yet manifested in the world. It's the letter that connects the silent spiritual world with the manifest, no other silent letter in Hebrew. The Ayin is a guttural. The Aleph is a silent letter. By the way, Hebrew letters are words as well. No other language is like that either. In Hebrew, the letter is a word. Aleph is a letter, but it's also a word. Aleph means to teach, to raise up spiritually. Aleph is the highest rank. Aleph is the highest number. 
Some say that English, aloof, elev- elevate, maybe even elephant, come from this letter of elevation. If you understand how the letters spin off from the word, the language is spin off from Hebrew. You know that, by the way, the word aleph means one and it also means a thousand. Very interesting. The highest named number in the Hebrew system is a thousand. If you add up the whole alphabet together, you get 999. There are nine letters that signify the ten, the units. There are nine that signify the tens. There are nine that signify the hundreds, if you include the final letters. You get 999. Then you get Aleph, which is a thousand, which is back to Aleph, which is the mystical tail snake that has his tail in his mouth, as I'm sure you're aware. So Aleph is the highest. <clears throat> That's the full circle. So an Aleph really says it all. So when you look in an Aleph, you're looking at the root unfolding, unpack. It will unpack from there the whole Torah. You look at a bet of a Bereshit, you're looking at the origin of Torah that way. And therefore, however you look at it, you see the Torah is a root of spiritual essence. Understanding what Hebrew is, enough to make you religious overnight.